What's up, guys? Hopefully my mic levels are good here. This is a little bit of a goofy setup. We're gonna turn that gain up a little bit more. How's everybody doing? I think I can actually read the comments this time, so that'll be good. I am uh, super excited. I don't know about you guys, but I have been waiting to try a KSR cabinet for a very long time. I briefly got to check one out when I visited Kyle's facility, man, a year and a half ago. What's up, William? How's everybody doing? We got, oh man, we had 21, now we only have 10. I'm that ugly that everybody was like, all right, we gotta get out of here right away. So anyways, hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Sorry that I didn't upload anything over the weekend. It was just, uh, with the band being out on the road, it was a busy weekend for me. So I didn't really have time to get everything done. Mav uh, is gonna sit right in front here. He's depressed because we haven't gone on our, our walk yet today. We'll go later, buddy. But um, yeah, yeah, super busy weekend, but really fun. Got to play with Terror yesterday in Cleveland. Terror is one of my favorite hardcore bands. And uh, one of the bands that honestly got me into hardcore all the way back in, I want to say 2002, 2003, their first album, Lowest of the Low, still one of my favorite hardcore albums of all time. But uh, yeah, so that was fun, had a great weekend, and got an update this morning that this, uh, this cab was going to be delivered, and here it is. So I figured I would unbox it here with all of you guys and uh, share the joy, share the love. I got a couple amps stacked up behind me. So once we unbox this thing and take a little look-see at it, after that, we can actually hear how this sounds. So hope you guys are excited for all, about, for all that. Uh, yeah, my dog probably constantly wonders who I'm talking to and he's probably uh, constantly annoyed with me too because I'm not talking to him during the day anymore. Basically had the summer completely off from uh, content creation so he got a little bit spoiled with getting to hang out with the girlfriend and I all day long. So now she's back to work, I'm back to work and he lays around looking sad all day until later in the day when we can actually go out and, and do some fun stuff. So, huh Mav? Yeah, he's sad. So uh, let me start. I'm going to start my Facebook live stream real quick here, and then we can start unboxing this beast because honestly, I wanted to tear this thing apart at 930 when it showed up, but I figured it would be better if we did it together. So yeah. Yes, it is a 4x12. Any, uh, any guesses as to what the speakers are going to be, guys? I'm curious to see what you guys think I might have put in this cabinet. Got to start the Facebook live stream, make sure everybody knows what's going on here. Good to go. There we go. All right, Facebook. We are good to go on Facebook. Direct everybody over to the YouTube channel. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, thank you for the uh, super chat. That's you, RJ, right? I believe that's you, Mr. RJ Ward. I appreciate you guys. If you guys have any questions, hit me up with that stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into this. Why don't we get into this thing? Uh, let's see. We got V30, no. DV77, no. K100, no. Greenbacks, no. All right. So nobody has actually guessed it yet. Pioneer six by nines. You're taking me back to my '88 Olds Cutlass, my first, my first car. That's what I had in there. Put some, put some nice Walmart edition Pioneer 6x9s and a Rockford P1 Punch subwoofer in there. Good memories. I used to, I remember jamming, when I put my subwoofer and my new speakers in the car, the first thing I jammed was Barrier Dead. And that was one of the only good 
hardcore metalcore records with solid production back in the day. And uh, I just would listen to that all the time because that was one of the only records that actually sounded good from a production standpoint. So what's the deal with these cabinets? First time you ever, ever hearing about them. I have a Marshall BV right now. Have had Mesa Recto as well as Angle 412. What makes these so expensive? They're not, Chris. Uh, these cabs are not expensive. So they may seem expensive because you can buy used cabinets on the, on the market for like four to 500 bucks. But this cabinet is 1200 bucks new. Go online and tell me how much a Friedman or a Bogner or a Dietzel or an Engel or a Mesa cab is new. I bet you that those cabs are all more expensive than this cab. So these really don't have any sort of premium price to them. Um, yeah, so they're just custom handmade here in the United States. They don't make stock orders. They literally make every cab to the customer specifications. You can choose any Celestion speaker that you want. I don't know if Kyle is doing anything other than Celestion at the moment, but um, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, they're, they're not expensive and they are different. Like most cabs are either a variation on a Marshall 1960 A or B cab or a variation on a uh, Mesa, uh, oversized rectifier cab. Those seem to be the two cabs that pretty much every other cab company rips off except for a special few. One of them being KSR. KSR has their own custom dimensions. They have a special baffle board, uh, not a baffle board. I'm sorry. They have a special, um, what do you call that? The reinforcement post, you know, in most cabs, it's just a center post. That's like a two by two piece of, of just stock lumber. This actually is a big, thick piece of plywood that has a bunch of different size holes drilled through it. And I believe that that does affect the sonic qualities of the cab a little bit. Not 100% sure on that, but I know that there's a reason that it is done. I believe uh, the Mills, if you guys remember Mills Custom Cabs, Mills Afterburner, they had something similar to that, but they haven't been in business for quite some time. So yeah, KSR along with like Omega, are some of the only companies that are kind of doing things a little bit different when it comes to the cabinet things. So yeah, what do we got? Creambacks. All right. Somebody got one of the speakers, right? We got creambacks. Um, so which creamback? H75. I'm not going to make you guys guess because that's stupid. So I got the H75 creamback, but I also got a different speaker in there. And again, I think you guys might have a little trouble guessing it, but let me know. Uh, Jimmy, I don't know if these are 11 ply birch. They might, they might be 13. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure. The sticker on here says the cab weighs 124 pounds. So it's beefy. It's definitely not a light cab, but I think it's about time that, uh, that we start digging into this. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm talking too much. I always try to field your guys' questions. Um, but you know, we got to get to business here. No, not the EVH speaker, Redback. All right, Jared got it. We've got Redback H75 combo in this cabinet. So I wanted to do something that I was sort of familiar with, but was just different enough to stand out a little bit. You guys know I really like the Redbacks for the higher powered greenback type tones. I think the Redback is a phenomenal speaker. And the H75 Creamback, I have one, but I haven't spent a lot of time with it. So. In retrospect, I probably should have got this thing loaded with H75 Creambacks, all four, so I could really hear what they sound like on their own. But I just knew that I wanted something that was gonna be a little different. Um, so that's that's what I went for. 125 pounds, not 175, sorry, brother. But uh, yeah, white foam board hell. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, let's tip this back. tip her back, set it down gently, try to get you guys a good angle on the action. All right, so let's cut the bottom. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. Always cut towards yourself swiftly and recklessly. There as if there was any other way to open a box when you're excited. All right, there it is. We got our white foam. 
Let's hope that the cab is bagged so this doesn't get attached to the cabinet. All right. Ugh, I'm so excited, guys. I'm super excited. I do hate foam very, very much. But this thing is in there very nicely. Trying to think of the best way to get this out of here. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tip it back up. Maybe. Do it like this. All right. Spin it around so we can give you guys a good view. So there it is. Bagged up. Somebody said, welcome Kyle Rhodes. Is Kyle in here? If he is, what's up, Kyle? Ah, okay. All right, I see Kyle here. Two ohms mono, okay. Plugging two cables and activates the stereo option. It'll be four ohms per side. All right, cool. Thanks for the heads up, man. I know I, I asked for eight ohm speakers. I just like the way the eight ohm speakers sound better. Um, they're not as scoopy. Mids are a little bit more forward. But I also asked Kyle to put a stereo jack in and he accommodated me. He put a stereo jack in the back of this thing. But it also makes for a little bit of a goofy ohm layout when you're trying to hook everything up oh this thing looks great already i'm super excited all right it's time for the reveal let's get this plastic off of here let's get this box out of here before we get foam all over the carpet and i get in trouble when the girlfriend gets home So yeah, I've been waiting to order a KSR cab since I visited Kyle's facility, man, a year and a half ago. And they were putting the finishing touches on this all white cab with white grill cloth. It was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen, but I plugged into it and it just sounded massive. It sounded so huge and deep and I've been wanting one ever since, but it's uh, not, not a secret that I'm a cheap person. So. Buying new cabs for me sometimes is a little difficult because I tend to get them for really low prices on the used market a lot, but I figured it was finally time, time to pull the trigger on this thing because I've been waiting long enough. <clears throat> so. All right, what's skinned Christ? That's okay, that's who he's under. Just wanted to see. So I went with this one, with the Blackened Tuna Tolex, and I'll give you guys a little bit of a close up here. This Tolex is so cool to me. I think this is the coolest looking Tolex. I had to have Kyle custom order it, which I was fine with. Um, so now he's got some on hand, so when I order an amp from him, he can get me an, a matching amp, right Kyle? Alright, so we've got the casters on the side, thank God, because this thing is heavy. This thing looks so sick. So sick. I love it. All right. Definitely going to be some vacuuming taking place here in a little bit. Hey, what are you doing? Huh? You trying to get some camera time? <laughs> Look out, buddy. All right, man. 
Here it is. I'll give you guys a little bit of a close up. We're wired in now. Look at that. That is such a cool Tolex. Really, really love it. We got the black real cloth. It's, it's just different enough. It looks classy, but it is just different enough to kind of stand out a little bit. So now I got to get start getting some of my heads re Tolex to match this because I am I am a little bit of a weirdo about stuff matching. So looks awesome. Yeah, my old husky's over here hiding behind the couch if you can't see him. Just hanging out, being a good boy. There he is in his spot. So, all right. So, yeah, man. 8 ohm. Uh, we've got Redbacks and Creambacks, H75 Creambacks. Let's do that. We're gonna bring this camera down just a little bit. Yeah, kind of carbon fiber. I guess I could see that. Cool texture. Let's bring this down a little bit. Hi, how are you guys doing? Dude, I'm super, super pumped to plug into this cabinet. Super excited. Yeah, luckily my dogs are, are tolerant of all the crazy loud noises and everything, so. All right, so let's back this up just a hair. And what amp do we want to do first? We've got uh, a 5153, 50 watt. I've got the Angle Fireball 25. And I do have the KSR modified dual rectifier that you guys saw on my live stream about two weeks ago. So let me know what you guys want to hear. I'll let you guys vote for a second real quick. I'm going to start getting my cables ready, but uh, I think I know which one you're going to vote for. My stuff is long enough to reach the power outlet. I didn't really think that one through. All right, so on the back here, eight ohms mono, four ohms. Okay, so the red backs are top and the H75s are bottom. I forgot that that's how I, I spec'd it out for Kyle. So that's cool. He even, even makes a custom laid out uh, little print for the the rear speaker cover or I'm sorry the jack plate I don't know what the hell I'm talking about for the jack plate um, he's got a custom print that that literally tells uh, it gives you the ohm rating and it gives you what speakers are on what jack so that's really cool nice feature for sure all right so who's voting what we've got 5153 dual rec dual rec 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 no pedals, Dave. You're out the wrong channel, bro. Get out of here with that no pedal nonsense. 5153, angle, EVH, Archon is not an option. Angle, EVH, 5150. We're going to start with the dual rec because that one's definitely got the most, most, uh, most votes right off the bat. So we got this guy right here. I think it only makes sense that I black out the front of this at some point and then have Kyle retolex the head shell and this matching stuff because something tells me this combo is going to be ridiculous and I'm really excited right now. It's not often that I get excited over new gear anymore, uh, but this is absolutely one of those times. By the way, I, yes, I did choose all light amps because I spent my whole weekend loading and unloading gear out of the van. I'm a little bit sore. That's what happens when you get older. Some of you guys are older than I am, so I'm sure you understand. All right. So, there we go. 
We're all plugged in. We're good to go. I got the Dunnable over here um, just because I was feeling it. But I also have my Les Paul Custom chilling in the case behind me. So we can plug that in as well. I used, I honestly, it's the first time I played my, my Silver Burst Les Paul Custom in, man, probably eight months. I changed the pickup out a while ago. And ever since then, I just haven't really played it. So we should be about set up here. Jason Constantine, what's up? He says, all the amps. I like your style, man. You know how I roll. Every of the amps. All right. So let's get this SM57 on here. We're going to mic up the cream backs first. So we're going to go on the bottom. I'm going to mic that cream back up, just like I do my vintage 30s right where the dust cap meets the cone we're gonna do right on right on the grill cloth as close as we can possibly get it if any of you guys were ever curious about how exactly i line all that stuff up i have not touched a guitar yet today so my playing will probably be worse than normal so i apologize I actually got a call. I forgot I had a, an appointment to get some body work done to my car today because somebody pulled out and hit me and uh, got a rude awakening at 8 a.m. Got home at like 3 in the morning last night. So I'm a little bit tired. I apologize that this stream is boring. All right. Let's power this up. Let's make sure none of our boosts are on. We got the Friedman Buxom boost. We're going to turn that off. By the way, absolutely awesome overdrive, guys. I see my head is cut off in this picture here, so we'll pull that camera back a little bit. Let this baby warm up for just a minute. I'm seriously so excited to hear how this thing sounds. I can't wait. Cannot wait. We are, yep, we are in the correct input. Let's turn this master down before I blow myself out of the water here. Everything was turned up to 10 for <laughs> whatever reason. All right, so, all right, we've got no boosts on. All I have is the Rev G8 in the back, gating this thing, and uh, yeah, let's fire it up. What do you guys say? I'm gonna turn the vocal mic off for a second while I try to figure this thing out. And uh, yeah, let's go.
guys so first first impressions what are you hearing on your end uh, somebody says it sounds a little roomy I don't know how that's possible the SM57 is literally on the grill cloth and my room mic was completely turned off so it might just be the speaker itself I know that the 875 cream back is definitely more midding or midi um, like in a rounder sense, it's definitely not nearly as sharp as a Vintage 30 is, so it's naturally gonna sound uh, a little bit a little bit rounder. But we got 84 people in here, okay. 84 people, there was 97 like two seconds ago. Apparently me playing just turned everybody off, but um, yeah. Yeah, room mic was off and the SM57 is directly on that speaker, so. Um, yeah, guys, I, I read what you're saying. I'm going to leave it there for now. I, I, uh, I know that there are different miking techniques for different speakers, but again, it's just kind of like a direct comparison of how I would mic my SM57. So, um, I'll mess around with it a bit later, but for now, I'm just going to kind of leave it, check out a couple different amps. We'll probably go over to the red back as well and check out the red back. Um, also, what was I going to say? The, uh, the baffle is angled back slightly. It's not a straight up and down baffle like you would find on a straight Mesa cab or anything like that. This one is just kind of, it's got that little Marshall lean back to it. Um, Sheldon, uh, I am not saying it's a dark speaker whatsoever, but it is certainly not nearly as spiky as a Vintage 30, especially a newer Vintage 30. So, uh, didn't say it was dark, just said that the mids are much more round than they are on a uh, Vintage 30. So, let's, uh, yeah, let's try that again. I'm gonna flip this back on. We're gonna try a different boost. This guitar is also a little bit rounded off in the high end too, so I'm actually gonna, why don't we try dialing up Boss SD1 here. I'll try to remember how to play some riffs. My mind is just like not working correctly at the moment. <laughs> something's up I will check it out I don't know what's going on I'm plugged in the mono jack so you guys are saying that no sound is coming out okay that's why only the top speakers are currently working so maybe I have something wrong here I 
It says I am in the AOM mono jack, so everything should be working. But uh, yeah, uh, the bottom speakers are not coming through, so that's interesting. So um, I got to grab another speaker cable real quick because, um, yeah, my, uh, the cream backs are not coming out at all. I'm not getting anything from the cream backs. So, um, and the way that this is laid out on the back, like I have to have two speaker cables plugged in in order to get the stereo effect. So give me just a second. So this should technically be the bottom speakers. stereo so um yeah all right i guess technically we're in stereo now so let me redo the levels and i'll fix it real quick
sounds incredible we got a bunch of questions let me turn this mic gain up i don't know what the hell i'm doing uh yeah dude this thing through the the h75 cream back sounds unreal that sounds super super good uh let's try to get to some of these questions sorry you guys were asking me some stuff obviously everybody's much more happy with how things are sounding now we're still only going through uh two of the speakers so we're only going through the cream backs um yeah it's super super tight so um this guitar dunnable uh de r2 has the stock dunnable pickups in it these pickups are not super tight on their own so that's telling you something with how tight everything is sounding right now and they're a little bit on the round side the highs are kind of rounded off and they're not very high output so um yeah, it, even with all those things in mind, these are not my ideal pickup. They're not an ideal pickup for how I like to dial my tone in, and things still sound incredible through this cab, through this amp, SD1, both both the SD1 and the Badass Modified. The Badass, the, the M77 sound incredible. Yes, this is an oversized cabinet. I don't know the dimensions offhand, though. That's... that's uh, I believe that it's a little wider than a Marshall or a Mesa cab. The Mesa oversized cabs are the same width as like a 1960 cab, but they're taller. This, I believe this is both a little bit taller and a little bit wider. So yes, it is oversized. It is, it's a pretty deep cab as well, but it's still, oof, um, still super tight, really percussive. And that's just two speakers. Um, yeah, hell of a combo rectifier kit. Yeah, yeah. I definitely not mad at how this thing sounds. Uh let's uh let's see if we can get the redbacks working because I want to hear how this thing sounds as a full stereo combo. Obviously, you guys are not going to be able to get the full experience because I only have the single SM57 right now. Um All right. So, let's see I'll give you guys my thoughts on, um, Dave, I absolutely hate EMGs, and even if I did use EMGs, I would still need a boost. Needing a boost, uh, I don't know how many videos I've made on this. I don't care if you need a boost or not. I want a boost. I would rather have a boost in my signal than not have a boost because I like flavoring my amp and my cabinet and my pickups with 
an overdrive that fits everything well because it's just another way to tailor your tone. So um, I also think EMGs are extremely boring sounding. So luckily we're all entitled to our own opinions. All right, so now we have all four speakers working. I'm gonna, you guys aren't gonna be able to hear the red backs. I'll, I'll switch the microphone over to the red backs after a second, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of feedback on what I'm hearing here in the room now that everything works. All right, so yeah, some of you are already pointing out that it sounds a little bit rounder. I agree, I agree. It sounds, it's rounded out quite a bit and I, it's for one, the low end is huge. The low end is massive when we have all four speakers going. That's a combination of the amp itself and the cabinet. Um, but I kind of like it better with just the H75s if we're being 100% honest, the Redbacks, round things out almost a little bit too much. Why is my phone ringing repeatedly? Go away. Um, yeah, yeah, it's almost, it's, almost, uh, it's almost too rounded with the red backs up top. I might actually go in and switch those around because I kind of want the H75s being the prominent thing um, and whichever speaker is up top is gonna hit your ear first, obviously. Or maybe I'll X-pattern or something, but um, the H75s on their own sounded incredible. The adding the Redbacks in definitely filled things out a lot, but it kind of hauled the amp out a little bit in a way that I don't necessarily love. So I have Redbacks in another cabinet, but not in an oversized cabinet. They're in a very tight, they're in my Mezza Barba 1969 cab, and they may work better in a smaller cabinet because, uh, um, just, you know, smaller cabinets tend to be tighter, especially if they're really well built. That, that Mezza Barba is very stout. It's very solid. Um, this cab is also very solid, but the oversized dimensions, slightly oversized dimensions, and also being a straight cab may make it maybe even just a little bit too much for, um, for this cab. But it could be the amp too. It might work better with the 5150, I don't think it sounds bad by any means. I just was really digging that H75 on its own. That was sounding really good on its own. Um, I'm gonna put a video up on the rectifier. Um, creams and V30s in an X pattern works well. Yeah, man, I might give that a try or I might just go all H75. I uh, have noticed that I kind of like 
recently have been liking all the same speaker in a cabinet. Um, so I may just go all 875 and then throw those redbacks into maybe one of my 212s or something, but it doesn't sound bad by any means. It, sounds, it just sounds too big. Like it sounds too chunky and it's not loose. Uh, it's not, it's not like loose or muddy. It's just, uh, I really like that bite, that upper mid bite that those H75s had on their own. Um, red backs are square, square, not round. I don't know what that means. Uh, preferred all four speakers going since the red backs only rounded things a tiny bit. Okay. In the room, it was pretty noticeable, but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, here it's cool. It's cool that it actually did make a difference in the overall tone on the microphone too. Um, yeah. Do you want? All right, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. Do you want me to throw the mic on the red back and just rip away a little bit more on the Mesa, or do you want me to hook up the 5150 um, or the Angle Fireball? You guys, let me know. I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. Um, yeah, I had the, I had the mic on the H 75s this whole time. The mic has been on the H 75, but all I did was, was, um, uh, I had it just on the H 75s on the bottom, the cabinet, and then I plugged in a separate cable to make the, um, uh, put the red backs in the signal. Sorry. I probably shouldn't be doing a live stream today, guys. I'm like super tired and out of it. So I, I apologize. Um, Kane wants to hear the red back. Jason wants to hear the red mag. We got fireball, mostly 5150s. I'll do this. I will do the red back real quick, and then we will move over to um, the 5150. No, it's not the stealth. It's just the regular 5150, 50 watt. So let's bump this mic up. And the red back has the larger dust cone, so I am actually going to kind of move it a little bit more towards the center. And we should be good right there. We'll call it an experimental mic placing. All right, so I'm going to turn my vocal mic off. We're gonna jam on the red back for a second, and then we will go over to the 5150, guys.
So that was the rectifier. And yes, I recently on Facebook have been singing the praises of the Buxom Boost, especially when it comes to tightening up looser amplifiers. The Friedman Buxom Boost, if you guys are trying to get more modern sounds out of your amplifier, believe it or not, this pedal will absolutely get you there. Um, I overlooked this pedal for a long, long time. Recently came across a really good deal on one, one that was too good to pass up. And now it's quickly becoming one of my favorite boosts, especially for tightening up fat amplifiers because it just, it's got a low shelf. This tight knob on it is a low shelf. And much like on the Mud Killer, the Mud Killer is kind of a similar thing. The tight, fat and skinny knob, also a low shelf, but the Friedman just kind of accentuates a little bit more of your traditional frequencies that an overdrive does. The Mud Killer is a little bit more modern um, but you also have a full mid bass treble EQ on here. It just, I know this video is not about that, but I'm going to make a dedicated video on this boost soon because I absolutely love this thing. But yeah, um, I saw a lot of people saying they really liked the Redbacks. I saw a couple people say that they are, they didn't like it. Uh, somebody liked, uh, liked the tones a lot on the higher strings. Um, again, I haven't experimented with miking a Redback at all, so... This may not be the optimal mic placement for it. This is, it's a good sounding speaker. I really, really like the speaker, but that H75, man, that thing is really doing it for me. So, uh, how am I not going deaf? It's not that loud. It's not that loud in here. Um, the BEOD and the Dirty Shirley pedals. Yeah, yeah, I bet you the Buxom Boost would go really well with the BEOD, especially if you have the deluxe version. The deluxe version of the of the BE Overdrive is incredible. Um, but the Buxom Boost works really well on the Friedman BE Mini, the little 20 or 30 watt amplifier, and that thing sounds insane. And then you throw that Buxom Boost in front of it, and it's, it's so good. And I know that the BE Mini is very similar in circuitry to the BE Overdrive, so make a lot a, a lot of sense um,
hide things. I'm sorry to hear that, Mat Mat Matthias. Matthias. Uh, I would not want to be you. I'll just put it that way. So, all right. Yeah, let's switch over to the 5150, and then we will put the mic back on the H75 and hear how it sounds with a good old 5150. Jimmy, I love you, man, but how is that a serious question? How broken in are these speakers that I just pulled out of the box? <laughs> okay, there you go. You got it. Yeah, these things are gonna, the sound is gonna shift a little bit over time too as the speakers break in, so keep that in mind. This is literally, I literally just unboxed this amp moments ago if you missed the beginning of the stream, so keep that in mind. If you guys would do me a favor, hit the like button so this gets in front of more people. Uh, the last stream that you guys hung out with me on, you guys were hitting that like button like crazy. And that stream did really, really well, and I really appreciate it. So do me a favor, hit the like button, and help your boy out. I would appreciate it. All right, so we got the good old 5150-350 watt here. More people are familiar with this one, which is why I tend to use it more. Um, and I also, I like it better than the Stealth. Um, and my EL3450 watt is modified. So try to use amps that people are familiar with in these demos. That way they kind of get a, get a sense of how the cab makes things differ. If that makes any sense at all. But I like the mids on this one better. The Stealth, the mids are a little too scoopy. Uh, depends on the cab and the guitar and everything, but generally I tend to like the regular 50 watt better. <clears throat> it's been a while since I fired this one up actually. All right, thanks for hitting the like button guys. I see we got like 11 more likes. If anybody else is watching and they, they have access to that like button, if you're enjoying, hit the like button. If you hate my face, my voice and everything about me, hit the dislike button, it doesn't matter. Engagement helps me regardless. So I am going to first plug in the input cable. That's gonna help our case. Appreciate it, Joey. Thank you to you guys who hit the like button before the stream even started. I appreciate that. Appreciate the support as always. And again, sorry, I'm a little flat today. I'm a little tired, lack of sleep. All right, so let's go over to the blue channel, which is where I absolutely love this amp at. We got the gain at half. Turn the volume. We'll, we'll adjust the volume real quick. 82 likes. All right, there we go. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying the stream. Um, we got the angle fireball over here, too. If you guys have any special requests, I got time. Um, and uh, I'm trying to trying to warm up on guitar here. I'm playing really sloppy today, so I apologize. But let's hear how the red back with the 5150 sounds real quick. Thank you. 
guys you guys are saying good things but over here I am not hearing good things um, I'm not liking <laughs> the blue channel through these speakers at all it's really quacky like really really like cat 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 like uh, not digging it not digging it um, I almost want to grab a different guitar because that could be part of it too let me grab my custom real quick and see how that sounds but I was I was definitely not liking the way uh, that that the speakers were sounding with the EVH. I was liking it a lot with the rectifier, but with this with this amp, it's definitely not doing it for me. So let me grab that guitar real quick. All right, fresh with Last night's sweat still on it. And out of tune. Alright, so let's try that. This may sound a little bit better, or it may sound worse. We'll see. Thank you. 
liking that better but I'm getting some weird high frequencies too from the guitar and the low E is just it was giving me problems when we were uh, playing as well I just need to intonate the guitar um, it's been a while since I've given it a proper setup so the E was just a little bit out um, it sounds fuller like that through this guitar for sure um, and yeah always disappointing with new speakers um I don't agree with that I don't agree that they have to be broken in I've been plenty happy with uh, with new speakers right out of the box I just think that I don't like this uh, amp with these speakers nearly as much as I like the rectifier um, the rectifier just sounded perfect through this cab like right off the bat so um, Maybe we'll try the red channel I typically don't play the red channel on these 5150 amps because they're like almost too over the top in some regards, but they tend to be a little bit smoother in the EQ. So let's switch over to the red channel. switch back over to my to my trusty Balliger because things are driving me nuts right now this guitar I need to set it up it was it was only giving me minor things live I only had to tune it once or twice but today I can't get it in tune at all so let me grab that Balliger
All right, let's see what we can do with this. All right, let's give this a try. So yeah, that to me, much better uh, with the Balagher. The Balagher is just balanced in the EQ. Um, yeah, uh, I think that this amp just puts out a lot of like really high frequencies. And if you have a guitar that's slightly noisy um, or you're in an environment that's slightly noisy, like right now I'm sitting right next to the amp. So naturally the guitar is gonna feed back if I'm playing loud. Um, that's being accentuated through this amp much more than it was through the rectifier. So I was noticing that too. It was, it was quite a bit noisier. So not really liking this amp through this cab all that much to be a hundred percent honest. Um, William in the room, man, the resonance is like crazy. Like the low end in here is, is actually over the top. So, um, I'm going to switch this over to the H75. Let's see how it sounds through that speaker. I am. I agree. Somebody said that the mids were really quacky. I agree. I'm hearing that. It's driving me nuts, to be 100% honest. And uh, I don't really like how it sounds. Um, the red channel especially. The blue channel is definitely much more evened out, um, especially with the Balagher. But, yeah. Definitely... At this point, liking the rectifier much better. So, don't think I ever thought that I would say that. Get this on. <laughs> All 
So I see you guys are saying that you like the 875 much better. That makes sense to me because uh, I think that it just suits this amp way better. The, the Redback is just not working with this amp at all. Um, so yeah, we had the uh, Badass Modified on for that. The Bucks and Boost was not on at all. Um, yeah, finally, let's hook up the angle. And uh, I think we'll call it a day after that. I am not playing very well. And... Uh, I don't know that my ears are working very well today either, so maybe, uh, I don't know. The rectifier did sound really, really good to me. The H75s on their own sounded really good to me too, so maybe I just need to, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The Redbacks. I think the Redbacks are kind of the culprit of what I'm not necessarily liking. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that's it. Um, actually... Real quick, I'm just gonna hook up just the Redbacks. We're gonna take the other cable out of the equation.
the uh, mic is on the 75. Does it sound empty or something? The mic was on the right speaker. So, not sure what was happening there. Try the angle. I feel like the angle is going to do well on here because it definitely doesn't have the quacky mid thing going on. <clears throat> So yeah, I was not liking the 5150 whatsoever on just the H75s. I don't know. Could just could just be having a bad tone day. You guys ever plug into your gear and it's like everything you know you love that sounds good normally just does not sound good. I feel like I'm having one of those days. But again, the rectifier sounded incredible, so I don't know. I think I just need to hang it up before I make any more awesome gear sound bad because I'm not doing so hot today. All right, let's see what this angle can do. Last chance.
So, um, you did not hear it with the room mic at all, so I'm not sure what you're talking about, dude. Um, yeah, this amp definitely sounded much better. Definitely sounded much better. It doesn't have the quacky mid thing going on. The fireball is a little bit on the nasally side uh, in general. It's just got that kind of, it's got more of a raw mid tone than a lot of the other angles do, and that tends to lead it to being slightly nasally, but... The Fireball 25 is one of my favorite amps, period, right now. Like, this thing sounds incredible. Um, somebody asked, Cameron, I believe it was. Yes, there will be an Angle Week. Uh, and I have Angle's going to send me an amp. And I have enough other Angle amps in my possession currently that we can make an entire week out of it. I've also got a cab and a pedal. It may extend past seven days. We will see. But, yeah. We've got a whole lot of angle content that's going to come. It'll probably be the beginning of October. I am liking this, this amp much more with this cab. I can't wait to get this cab broken in a little bit better. I'm actually going to switch back over to the, uh, the Dunable and see how that sounds through the angle. The angle has a ton of gain as well. Um, but yeah, this combo is sounding much better to me. And I honestly, guys, I think I might switch this cab all over to H75s. We will see. I do like the Redbacks, but I almost feel like the Redback is a speaker that I kind of would rather have on its own because the difference in the EQs of these speakers is so drastic that it's kind of hard to balance them out a little bit. Um, yeah, man, Angle stuff is awesome, dude. I slept on Angle stuff for a long, long time. The first angle that I got was the original Powerball. I absolutely hated it. It was a fizz machine. Um, the second angle that I got was the Iron Ball, and I didn't like that one either. But then I got a, uh, it was called a Retro Tube, and the Retro Tube was was it for me. It just, the low end was a little too sloppy for my my taste. It it wasn't, like, it was, it was just, didn't have any percussiveness to it whatsoever. But the tone of that amp was incredible. So after that, I kind of went hunting, and now I have the Savage. I have the Savage Mark II, uh, both the 120 models. I've got the Angle Fireball 25, got the Anger, Angle Fireball 100. I've got, um, what's the other one I have? 
Powerball. I've got a Powerball 2, which they greatly improved the Powerball. And uh, I also have, not in my possession at the moment, but I purchased it off a friend of mine and I just have to go get it. The Angle Fireball Inferno Blackout model. So the Angle collection is growing pretty quick here and I'm not mad about it, but uh, never really dove into Angle, but this, yeah, dude, the Fireball 25 is incredible, man. This amp, seriously, if you can find one of these, I got a great price on it. I got it for like a thousand bucks used, but if you can find it for like $1,300 all day, this 25 watt, I just did a video on does it hang in a band setting, much like I did with the SLO. This amp is insane for 25 watts. It's got way more headroom than it needs. It's got way more volume. It's unreal. It's, it's the best, in my opinion, it is now the best of the lunchbox amps out there. Again, my opinion, but I would choose this over the SLO 30. Um, I would choose it over the MT15 all day long. I like the MT15, but the, the angle is where it's at for me. So with that being said, guys, we got 54 people left in here. I scared away half the audience uh, with bad playing and bad tones. Hit the like button if you could, please. If there's anything else that you guys want to hear after I mess around with this Dunnable on the angle, let me know and I'll make it happen for you. Thank you for sticking around this long while we get things figured out here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to spend the next few days breaking this cabin as good as I possibly can. And then I will make a dedicated video on it where we do maybe some actual studio tones. Um, but yeah, let's see how this, I feel like this Dunnable is going to sound really good on this combo. So let's do that.
I think we found the winning combination, at least as far as this cab and this video stream goes, guys. Uh, the Fireball definitely works with this cabinet. Um, yeah, yeah, that was fun. These are not active pickups. In fact, they are passives and they are low output passive pickups. Um, I don't remember what model they are, but they're the stock pickups in this guitar. So if you look up the uh, Dunable uh, DER2, Stock pickups in this guitar is what you guys just heard. They worked really well with this combination because it rounded off some of the uh, unpleasant frequencies. Um, somebody asked earlier if, uh, yeah, man, yeah, if you guys are listening onto your phone, you're not gonna hear low end. So keep that in mind. I, I've gotten a lot of comments from people who are like, there's no low end in your tone. And I know that they're just listening on a cell phone because I have a lot of low end in my tone, maybe even too much. For somebody who talks about mids all day long and how important they are to their tone, I've, I've got a lot of low end dialed into the way that I, that I like my tone. So uh, yeah, so, and then someone else also asked something along the lines of, where is it? Uh, Cameron Forrester, how much of the stuff that you dislike do you think could be really killer in adjacent genres and styles? Or do you typically think if they suck, they suck all around? See, that's the thing is I don't normally say that I think anything sucks. Like, even if it is pretty bad, I just tend to say it's not really for me because even if I think that there are things that sound bad, there's a whole genre out there based on guitar tone sounding bad, and that's like the preferred sound, like doom and fuzz. <laughs> um, I think that those tones sound purposely bad and like purposely broken, um, and people people still love that stuff. So I mean, who am I to say that something sucks? Um, I I have things that I like better for my style. I have things that it's it's hard to say that that uh, inherently just sound of a higher quality. But when you get note separation and clarity, I think those are things that come along with higher dollar amps, with better designed amps, with better components, because you're never gonna get the clarity and the harmonics that you get from, a, from an SLO, from a cheap, you know, super poorly built uh, tube amp built anywhere with you know bad components it doesn't matter where it's manufactured it's it, it's more of what it's manufactured with which is why i think the jet city amps sound good but they don't have the same harmonic content they don't have the same clarity that the slo does even though they get really close so uh yeah kind of going off on a whole rant here but essentially yeah i don't i tend to not say that things suck uh, I understand that most that most amps aren't even designed for what I put them through. Um, I just tend to try to mold things to my sound as much as possible. And using certain overdrives and even certain speakers and cabinets, I am able to get most things to sound at least within the ballpark of the way that I want them. 
But there are there are some amps that I inherently just don't like. Pretty much anything Egg Nader, uh, just anything that doesn't have good string separation and note clarity or tightness. There are some amps that as hard as I try, you can't get that out of them, and that's just kind of it's kind of part of the deal. So um, the Egg Nader stuff that I've all tried, they're all just muddy amps. And typically that's what's gonna drive me away from liking something is if it's really muddy and you can't get that muddiness out of there, yeah, that's 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 what I uh, tend to not like personally. But, I mean, there are amps that I have not necessarily loved on the channel that work really well for, you know, not thrash or not hardcore, that just work well for general rock and roll work well for you know more punk rock tones like over the weekend i used my soldano avenger i gave you guys the option to vote on which rig i used and the avenger was kind of the one that i was hoping that you guys would choose because i was just really digging that amp and it's not an amp that i would use for bushido code or even most of my like you know like more uh heavy hardcore bands but i used it for human animal and it sounded incredible for human animal i was super happy with how the amp sounded all weekend so it's it's like horses for courses, you know. Certain things work better for certain genres, and I just try to tend to stay away from saying that anything just sucks because different people like different stuff. Who am I to say that something sucks just because it doesn't fit my taste? So that was that question. I just wanted to touch on that for a second. Um, Barry, no, it depends. On this amp, currently, I have it dimed. Um, and I usually have the bass higher on this amp because there's no resonance control. So you do have to turn the bass up quite a bit, but I think Taylor likes a little bit more bass in his tones than I do. Um, but yeah, listening through monitors. Yeah. Everybody's liking the angle. Sound is so subjective. A hundred percent agree with that. Um, haven't heard of Cerberus guitars. And you also ask, sorry, but I think the Black Star stuff really sucks. Yeah, see, I don't like Black Star stuff either, but I'm not going to say it sucks. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it, guys. I'm, I'm kind of going on a weird rant. This has been a weird live stream today. So if you've hung out with me this entire time, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, do me a favor on your way out. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this stream will get put in front of more people who are probably wondering why I did a live stream today. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it. The cab came out beautiful. I'm super happy with it. I gotta get used to the speakers, break the speakers in overall and uh, report back after a couple of weeks of, of heavy playing and give you guys a video on the KSR. I'm happy with it. It, it looks incredible. Kyle. Kyle and crew did a great job and I'm super pumped on this thing. So yeah, hit the like button on the way out guys. Thank you so much if you stayed and hung out and asked me questions. I really do enjoy these live streams. They're very up and down uh, depending on how many people watch them, which I'm still trying to figure that out. But overall, what matters is connecting with you guys and having fun. Um, H75 Creambacks and Redbacks are what is in the cab. We have the mic on the H75 Creambacks. And uh, on the Fireball, you have to crank the volume to get a good amount of gain. No, no, I don't find that to be the issue or to be the case whatsoever. Um, the, the preamp, preamp, all the gains in the preamp on these things. Um, and the, yeah, you don't have to crank the volume to get the gain out of it. So. Somebody asked for one last riff, and I will give you one last riff, and we'll call it a day. So thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button on the way out. I'll think of something to play, and then I'll end the live stream. So have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow.